it's Leah from Teen Defenders. In my last video, I discussed the arguments that people use to dehumanize the unborn and thereby support abortion. I concluded that those arguments are invalid and arbitrary. The unborn are definitely human. That's obvious and is supported by science. But I also ended by suggesting that the question that people are asking is no longer, are the unborn human? Instead, they're asking, are the unborn persons? So let's take a look at that question next. First, let's look at the differing opinions that people have on when exactly the unborn gain their personhood. There are basically three views. The first is that the unborn gain their personhood at conception. This view suggests that being a human and a person are one and the same. The second view is that the unborn gain their personhood at birth. And the third view is that the unborn gain their personhood somewhere between conception and birth. There is actually a fourth view. Believe it or not, some people believe that the unborn don't gain their personhood until after birth, say six months old. So how do we decide which of these views is the right one? How can we tell when exactly the unborn gain their personhood? Well, let's see if the dictionary can help. If you look up the word person in the dictionary, you'll find that the basic definition is a human being. In other words, a person is a human being. And since the unborn are humans, that means, based on this definition, they must be persons as well. Now, that should be the end of the story, but it's not. The reason it's not is because the definition for a person becomes a little more creative when you look at different disciplines. For example, in sociology, the definition of a person is an individual human being. Nothing new there. But then it goes on to refer to his or her social relationships and behavioral patterns as affected by the culture. Now, this definition is understandable considering that sociology is the study of human society and the relationships between people. If we look to philosophy, the definition of a person is a self-conscious, irrational being. Again, this definition makes sense in the context of studying philosophy. Philosophy looks at how we use reason to understand things. Things like existence and the principles that govern and influence moral judgment. But since philosophy is also the study of the limitations of knowledge, any honest philosopher would admit that an understanding of the concept of personhood is limited at best, and therefore the philosophical definition of a person is also limited at best. Perhaps the most interesting definition of a person can be found in law. In law, a person is defined as a human being, a partnership, a corporation, an estate, or other legal entity recognized by law as having rights and duties. In other words, in law, a person is whoever the governing authorities decide to give rights to. So, under the law, you're only a person if the lawmakers say you are. Since the lawmakers insist that the unborn are not persons, this begs the question, how did they arrive at that conclusion? This is a good question, but unfortunately, there is no good answer. The conclusion was made arbitrarily. This becomes obvious when you realize that the laws of each country are different, and the laws in some countries are not even consistent with themselves. In the United States, the unborn are not considered persons when it comes to the issue of abortion. This is how they justify ending the lives of the unborn. However, the U.S. does have an Unborn Victims of Violence Act, so if someone murders a pregnant woman, he or she would be charged with two murders, the murder of the woman and the murder of her unborn baby. This is a fair law, which recognizes that justice demands an accounting for the life of the unborn victim, as well as the woman. However, it does highlight the arbitrary nature of personhood and the inability of lawmakers to be able to determine precisely when someone gains personhood. In Canada, the laws are more consistent in that the unborn are never considered persons and are never given rights, but the result is entirely unfair. For example, in a 2007 court case, a pregnant woman died from stab wounds inflicted by her husband. The female fetus was stillborn during a subsequent caesarean section. However, the husband was only charged with the murder and aggravated assault of his wife. Whenever lawmakers separate humanity from personhood and thereby deny a group of humans their rights, the result is always injustice. All we need to do is take a walk through history to see that clearly. Let's take a look at four examples from history where personhood was denied to a certain group of people. The first is the Holocaust. 
Now I'm here at a Holocaust memorial. You know, some people wonder how the Germans could have committed such atrocities against the Jewish people. But really, their justification was easy. Know how? All the German authorities had to do was simply declare that the Jewish people weren't persons. Hitler went so far as to say that the Jewish people weren't even humans. So the Jewish people were stripped of their personhood, and thereby stripped of their rights and their value. And that's why all the atrocities committed against them were considered acceptable. The next example of when personhood was denied to a group of people is during the time of slavery in the U.S. African people, torn from their homes and forced into slavery, were treated as property. They could be bought and sold, punished and even used as collateral. Because they were not considered persons in the eyes of the law, they had no legal rights or value. Amongst other things, slaves could not vote, own property, or even marry. The offspring of female slaves belonged to the owners, regardless of who the fathers were. Like the unborn, slaves were considered human, but not persons, and therefore they were stripped of their rights. The third example can be seen with the treatment of the natives in North America. Native Americans were considered non-persons and referred to as savages. This was convenient because it provided justification for the appropriation of their land. Some of you may have never seen a Canadian $50 bill, or you might not have taken the time to look closely at it, so you might not have noticed the five women that are pictured here. These women are known as the Famous Five, and they fought for the rights and personhood of yet another group of people, women. Women were declared not to be persons in Canada. They were considered to be less than men, and they were denied their rights. Unfortunately, this is not just a historical example, but even today in some countries, women are treated like animals and don't have rights because they don't have personhood. Frankly, I'm thankful that in Canada, I'm now a person. We can shake our heads at these examples, and people are quick to judge the Germans for the Holocaust. But we have our own Holocaust that's taking the lives of millions of unborn babies every year, and we do it using the same tactics as the Germans did. We deny personhood to the unborn, and thereby deny them their rights and justify our own actions. In case you're thinking that we can't compare abortion to the Holocaust, think about this. Approximately 6 million Jews were killed in the Holocaust, a terrible atrocity. But since abortion's been legalized, almost 45 million abortions have happened in the U.S. alone, and almost 42 million abortions happen worldwide every year. So let's go back to this question of personhood. Who decided that the Jews weren't persons, that the natives and slaves were persons? and that women weren't persons. Lawmakers? Who decides today that the unborn aren't persons? Lawmakers? You see, personhood has become a fabricated term used by lawmakers to decide who has rights and who doesn't. In the case of the Jews, personhood was denied to them because they weren't German. In the case of women, personhood was denied to them because they weren't men. In the case of the unborn, personhood is denied to them because they're dependent, because they look different, and because they can't do what older babies, children, and adults can do. In his book on personhood, Peter Kreeft accurately pointed out that whenever personhood is defined functionally, the dividing line between persons and non-persons will be based on a decision made by those in power, a decision of will. So when you're asking yourself the question, are the unborn persons, what you really need to ask yourself is should those in power be allowed to decide which humans are persons and which are not? Who gets rights and who doesn't? Once you allow one group of humans to lose their personhood, every other group's personhood becomes vulnerable and no one is safe. When will someone else decide that you're not a person? You see, we're not just fighting for the unborn's rights. We're fighting for our rights too.